Stephen Robinson. I thought about this message flying back on Fiji Airways uh, to Sydney on the way back from the tiny little island of Tuvalu. I wasn't there on holidays. I'd been there with a team from Uniting World and the Pacific Conference of Churches involved in disaster risk reduction and working with our partner church, the EKT, there in training and particularly in disaster recovery chaplaincy training. My role is National Disaster Recovery Officer of, of the Uniting Church and I work to equip the church and its agencies to prepare for and respond to disasters across the nation. I'm increasingly also working with Uniting World to assist in this way with our partner churches in the Pacific, including Vanuatu, Tonga, Fiji and now Tuvalu. Tuvalu is a little nation of just 11,000 people and it's one of the most vulnerable nations on earth. If you can imagine a sandbank off a beach and then magnify it so that it's about 20 kilometres long and between 200 and 400 metres wide, you'd get a feel for the main island. I preached in a church there on one Sunday and had the unique experience of seeing one coast just outside the back window of the church and the other coast just across the road from the front door. Tuvalu has the whole world watching it at the moment. Most of the main island is only a couple of metres above sea level. It has no hills and given rising sea levels, this wonderful nation that's filled with a living culture going back hundreds of years is expecting to be uninhabitable within 50 years. Even now there are increasing problems relating to salinity from the water table rising and large parts of the island are now being heavily flooded with each king tide. For them it isn't just a theory. Children are forced to climb palm trees to avoid being swept away. Houses are commonly being flooded and it's not uncommon for the sea to flow across roads and even through homes, even now. The people of Tuvalu have a, a deep and abiding Christian faith. 85% of the population belong to the EKT or Congregational Church, that's our partner church there, and there are other denominations as well. But early in the morning and evening, every church bell rings out to call families to devotional time and the whole nation stops on Sunday to gather in their many churches. Their traditional songs and dances are woven with stories of the Bible about God's faithfulness, including stories of Moses and other leaders and Jesus. Their whole life and culture revolves around the reading and sharing of scripture and the singing of hymns of praise, sharing meals, and time together. The reading we heard today about Jesus and his disciples in the boat on stormy water has been used to describe the church. It's interesting that the World Council of Churches logo is a boat with a cross-shaped mast being tossed about on stormy water. It's a brilliant image because it reminds us of a few realities. It tells me that the church is not a fortress built high and safe from stone protected and blessed just to defend a set of beliefs against attack. And the church is not a mighty, light, mighty cruise liner with stabilizers and movie theaters and buffet dinners. Rather, the church is like a little boat on a wild sea, exposed to all that life and the world throws at it. That logo I mentioned has a word on it, oikomene. It's a Greek word. Oikos means household or living together and oikomene means the whole inhabited world. It's a reminder of how our shared life together operates as a family of faith. The people of the church of Tuvalu know that they are vulnerable, but they also know that Jesus is in their boat with them. And I'm sure that there are times when they get the sense that Jesus may be asleep, and there are times like us when they call out to him in distress. I can only begin to imagine how frightening a cyclone must be when uh, approaching when there's only a few metres of land between yourself and the ocean. They know though that Jesus is in the boat of their island with them and they call on him to save them literally from the sea that's their life and also their potential destruction. But they are also aware that along with Jesus they have others in their boat with them. They have a very clear understanding that despite their physical isolation they're connected to a great big family that stretches out across the oceans to other lands. This is something that we in Australia too easily forget. The boat we share with Jesus has so many other people in it 
our brothers and sisters in Christ from every nation on earth, some much more vulnerable than others. Have you ever stood up in a small boat? It rocks, it sways, all the other passengers are affected by what you choose to do and how you move. Standing on that little coral island out in the middle of a great big ocean, I realised that a lot of lifestyle choices I make back in Australia actually rock the boat for these people in a big way. How I live, what I use, how I remember and pray for and support our brothers and sisters in vulnerable lands actually matters. We're in this together, disciples of Jesus from every place on earth, with him, our teacher and our saviour the captain of our journey, travelling together.